Hi. So we meet once again. We want to look at the development of the urinary system. I'm Dr. Rick Edu with the Department of Anatomy and Cell Biology. I welcome you. The objectives are for you to appreciate the developmental stages of the mature or definitive kidney. You should appreciate the constituent and the functions of the renal corpuscle and also appreciate some congenital anomalies of the renal system. This is a, a vertical section through the developing embryo. Um, looking at it, you can see that the trilaminar disc has been established. And for that matter, you have the three gem layers. So you can see that the neural tube has been formed as neural crescent automatically. That should be ectoderm, that is mesoderm, and that is going to be the endoderm with the yolk sac showing here. We want to concentrate on this portion of the intraembryonic mesoderm. Remember, the intraembryonic mesoderm give rise from media to lateral. Parexia mesoderm, intermediate mesoderm, and then the lateral plate mesoderm. So it is the intermediate mesoderm that usually gives rise to the urogenital system, including the gonad duct and accessory glands, and anything related to the kidney. Okay, because and the beta nephros. Again, this is a vertical section showing how the mesoderm is structured, the intraembryonic mesoderm, and therefore the portion we are interested in is this region, intermediate mesoderm. This will form a cord, okay, a cord from the cranial portion all the way to the caudal portion. So it's more like a long uh, mesodermal structure. It usually forms what we call the urogenital ridge within which you find the nephrogenic cord. So the urogenital ridge is the mass of the intermediate mesoderm. Urogenital means it's going to form the urinary system and then the genital aspect as well. So note this is very, very important for you to um, connect the lessons we are going to have today to the intermediate mesoderm. So the intermediate mesoderm forms a longitudinal elevation along the dorsal wall called the urogenital ridge, as I mentioned. A portion of this urogenital ridge will form the nephrogenic cord. So that is the urogenital ridge, and then within it, you have the nephrogenic cord. So you have this again. This dotted area will represent the mass of nephrogenic cord. Okay which is going to develop these uh, portions and which are going to grow into the mass. The pronephros forms pronephric tubules and its duct. So this duct and then the tubules, okay, which we will call nephrotomes, are the ones you see here. So the whole long thing is a tube, okay? And uh, in effect, we call that the Wolfian duct or the nephric duct. The nephric duct or Wolfian duct. And these are its tubules. So the tubule together with the duct will form the pronephros. So again, when you come to mesonephros, its tubules, as you see here, and then its duct will form the mesonephros. Then the metanephros also form the nephron and its tubules associated with it because it's going to be the final kidney as we will see. It forms as an outgrowth of the mesonephric duct, an outgrowth of the mesonephric duct, which will be the ureteric bud. So this is an outgrowth of the mesonephric duct. And then this tubule that is outgrowing becomes the ureteric bud. Then also from a mesoderm within the nephrogenic cord called the metanephric blastema or mesoderm. So this is a mesoderm within the nephrogenic cord known as the metanephric blastema or metanephric mesoderm. That is the cloaca. 
I want you to compare the two embryos here and then list the differences. Can you tell any difference or differences? Look at it very well. You should take your time to list the differences. Uh, I brought one of them here and I said you should list the members that form these numbers. So let's try and go through that. Obviously, this should be related the uh, purple color here should be related to the nephrogenic cord. Okay. So you have number one being the nephrogenic cord. Number two will be the duct. So nephric duct. Number three will be endoderm. If you remember the lecture on the development of the GIT, you know that this yellow portion will form portion of the GIT. So four guts, and the mid gut will be here, and then the hind gut. So that will be endoderm. Then number four will be cloaca, which is the part that is continuous with the hind gut. So the hind gut opens into the cloaca. And then again, we have had a lecture on this where the cloaca will be divided by the urorectal septum into an upper and lower portion, the urogenital sinus and then the rectal inner portion. Then number five is the degenerating nephrotomes or the tubules of the pronephros. Then eventually the meta uh, mesonephros will also have this degenerated after working for a while. Number six will be the vitlin duct. Remember the vitlin duct and then the formation of the mid gut and physiological herniation, right? Then number seven, that is the allantoid. So allantoid and also bladder formation with the urogenital sinus should remember that then anytime you hear of our allantoid to remember the urecus okay when there's a persistent opening uh, through the allantoid and then the bladder and then to come out through the umbilical cord and number eight is the mesonephric that entering the cloaca so pronephros is represented by about seven to ten solid cell groups known as the nephrotomes in the cervical region it is rudimentary and non-functional the cranial ones regress while the quarter ones are being formed it forms at the beginning of the fourth week and disappears by the end of the fourth week so this is what we have the so pronephros with its nephrotomes then we have the mesonephric duct and the developing mesonephric tubules that is the intermediate mesoderm the mesonephros and mesonephric that are derived from intermediate mesoderm early in the fourth week it functions for a short time during the early fetal period but regresses as the metanephros develops so that's the mesonephric that and developing mesonephric tubules then obviously the metanephros will be more below or further so that will form or appear in the fifth week. The metanephros is formed in the sacral region at the level of the first sacral vertebra S1 and then at the point of bifurcation of the aorta. Urine is usually excreted into the amniotic cavity and mixes with the amniotic fluid. So in this portion where you have the metanephric blastema and then the ureteric bud going into it okay it's a sign of the development of the metanephros so it's a specific unit developed from two structures the metanephric diverticulum also known as the ureteric band and then the metanephrogenic blastema or mesoderm or nephrogenic cord The metanephric diverticulum or ureteric bar is an outgrowth from the mesonephric that near the cloaca, as we have said already. The metanephrogenic blastema is derived from the quarter part of the nephrogenic cord. 
later on the return bag penetrates the metal nephrogenic blastem as you see there. Then the collecting system, the metanephric diabetic lump, which is also the ureteric bud, will give rise to the ureter, renal pelvis, major and minor calyces, and the collecting tube. So this is what happens. So that's the mesonephric that that is the ureteric bud, which is uh, budding out of it, and then entering the uh, metanephric blastema. Now, as it goes on, it forms the renal pelvis, and then later on, it bifurcates again, to give rise to major calyces, which will then bifurcate again to form minor calyces. Okay, so at the end of the day, you have the entire collecting tubules being formed. So each newly formed collecting tubule is covered at its end by the metanephric tissue cap. And this is going to be under an inductive influence. Okay, so under the inductive influence of the tubule, the cells of the tissue cap will form an S-shaped renal vesicle. So this is what happens. That is the collecting tubule. You have the metanephric tissue caps in blue. And then under the influence of the tubule, these blue regions will end up forming a renal vesicle, which will form an S-shaped structure. Okay. Eventually, this is going to form the Bowman's capsule, as we'll see. Then capillaries are going to grow into the S-shaped loop that we just uh, saw, and this will differentiate into glomeruli. The prosma end of each nephron will form the Bowman's capsule, while the distal end from the excretory tubule. So this is the prosma end which will form the Bowman's capsule, and then the distal end will form the excretory tubules. Continuous lending of the excretory tubule will result in the formation of proximal convoluted tubule, which is uh, that side. And then also the loop of Henle, which descends downwards. And then the distal convoluted tubule, which will join the collecting tubule. Initially, the definitive kidney lies close to each other in the pelvis ventral to the sacrum. As the abdomen and pelvis grow, the kidneys gradually come to lie in the abdominal region and move apart. They attain their adult position by the ninth week. It should be stressed that the, during the development, the kidneys also undergo a 90 degree turn towards the vertebral cord so that their highlight will be medially oriented to the vertebra. Okay? Uh, initially or originally, they were facing ventral. Okay? You know the hilum of the kidney. So we are saying that it is due to rotation that the hilum is directed towards the vertebral cords or the column. So in summary, we are going to say that the intermediate mesoderm gives rise to a urogenital ridge which within which forms a nephrogenic cord. Okay, out of this nephrogenic cord, we are going to have a cranial to cordal uh, development which will also a degenerate along that same line. So at the cranial portion, they are going to have the pronephros. Then the pronephros will degenerate with time, and then the mesonephros takes over. That's its work for a while. The mesonephros is made up of the mesonephric duct and its tubules. Then eventually, you have the metanephric diverticulum or ureteric bud growing into the metanephric blastema, and the ureteric bud will continue its differentiation to form the renal pelvis, the major and minor calyces, and then the excretory tubules. I hope this video helps. We will continue with um, the other portions of the excretory system, that is the bladder and then the urethra. Okay, so you meet once more. Thank you very much.